and a beautiful lady talked to him with his voice of this woman, right? This guy, his name supposed to be already baptized with the name Juan Diego. So when I see a movie one day that it talks about Juan Diego and the Juan Diego uh, messenger and a beautiful woman appears to him, beautiful woman they always show to us as has a dark skin, right? And Juan Diego always shows to us, because he was an indigenous person in the center of Mexico, with five little hairs over here and five over here too. Because it was indigenous person in the Mexico. The lady that I'm talking to you about it, that is dark skin. I know you heard her name, Guadalupe, Virgin of Guadalupe, right? So for us, most of the things were obviously the way they, how they people were right here. Dark, dark skin, right? So all these ideas about fair, blonde, blue eyes and everything, obviously was considered like something different in that time for here and maybe other places too. Any question before we go? The place is a religious center. Nobody lives around. I mean, they lives around, not on these buildings, right? But obviously, people want to wear jade, gold, and turquoise and beautiful feathers. So, what do you think that was the money that these people might use in those days? What could be used here in Janice as money? An idea? Gold? Money that grows on trees. What is the money that grows on a tree? Leaves. Money, if you have enough, when you mix that money with that hot water, it makes a delicious beverage. Cocoa beans. Cocoa beans mixed with water, you make a beverage that is called, in Maya language, hot beverage. Hot is, call, is called choco, chocolate, chocolatl, tomatl, aguacatl. All those words come from languages in Mexico. It's called tomate in Espanol, or aguacate in Espanol too, what you guys call avocado, right? And tomato is tomato. So all these words are from indigenous words, right? So those are the things that we used to eat right here. And obviously there were things that they brought to us, like potato, papa or patata, right? That's not Spanish. I mean, that's not Spanish, it's not Nahuatl or Maya, okay? Let's go. Yeah, question let me know, okay? Thank you. Vamonos, this way. Remember, we need to walk a little bit around, right? Cover a few buildings and then you guys are free. Free to change the one. Yes, they, they do, really. Yeah, yeah, they do. They do. So, here right now, us, we don't have the needs to eat the guan, right? Because we, we eat the chicken and we eat the pork and we eat all that stuff. But when the day comes that we have to eat whatever is out there, me, I'm gonna one of the first one I'm gonna be eating one just to try it, taste it, right? If you got no choice. Manderota, manderota. Oye, me ha traído la mía más que bonita, ¿no? Más que bonita está, padre, que dijo. Ahí está. The one with the Mexican fries. The one with the Mexican fries. Hola, hola. ¿Cómo me ves? Thank you. ¿Cómo me ves? Okay, so I was planning to take you there, right? That's our group boy there, isn't it? That That's not our group. Which one? And the other one at the back? Yeah. Let's go over there because there's shade over there, right? So we just go a little bit behind him, right to the other wall at the back. Where you saw that one? Oh, good. Okay, yeah. There, so let you do it. How many people went to Cabo when you did? How many do you think? 14 people. What? No, it was a small group. A group, but in total, how many people do you think there might be at the moment? Not too many. We went Saturday. Okay. We were the locals. It was very nice. Yeah, because actually, that's the reason why it's still Cabo let people climb, right? Not too many. Because not too many people go to visit that place. They said they're going to close it, maybe. Yeah, obviously one day they're gonna do that one the same as the middle. There's the rope in the middle, so you have to hold the rope. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, right here. So, uh, try, yeah, try to be somewhere in the shade. This place where you are, 
like this one, like this ball court, mm -hmm. we got seven. So this is actually one of seven, right? So there are six more out there. <coughs> of the seven, this is the biggest and the most preserved here in Chichen Itza. Mm -hmm. There is an area that is known as Mesoamerica. In Mesoamerica, they discover 1,500 ball courts. 5,000, 1,500 sounds like a lot of them. All over Mesoamerica that obviously are different cultures, not necessarily Mayas, they practice once this game, and today on the same area that is Mesoamerica, they practice this game too. Now, so there's places in Mexico that there are people practicing these games, okay? And depends where you practice, where you come from, what is the language that you might speak, is how you call the game. In some places, the game was, is called now, we got no idea how they might call back in that time, right? Because they, are, they didn't carry on saying what, what the name uh, called. But in some places now they call ulama. And ulama is quite simple because ule is the word that we use for you guys use rubber. So ulama is the rubber game. Poktapok Mayas and Tarascabal, the area of Michoacan. So we have different places in Mexico where we still play, practice something like this, okay? The 1500 ball course that we have all over Mesoamerica, some of you already seen another one, so you might saw TV shows or places. If you have been in another place, you have seen something like this through a TV show or maybe a book, your ball course that probably you have seen, if you didn't saw this one, they look probably like this. Yeah. When they look like this, the players plays most of the time on the ground area. Two or three players run to the slope and they hit one ball that is five kilos. Five kilos is like almost 10 pounds, that is this big. And when the ball that is 10 pounds pass through a hoop, the game is over, right? It's like that. But if you play on this place, when the ball goes to the hoop, the hoops on this ball court, they are not as high as the hoop in Chichen Itza. So Chichen Itza, when you see the hoops, like that one, right? Mm -hmm. So the ball needs to go through there and is 10 pounds, five kilos. And when the ball that is 10 pounds, five kilos pass through that one, game is over. Seven players per team. Six players in Chichen Itza plays on the ground. Captain of that team plays in upper higher level. Six plays the opposite team plays on the other side of the ground and the captain of that team plays in the upper higher level. Players pass the ball to each other until they wait and you should pass the ball to the captain because the captain is the one who's going to be passing the ball to the hoop and when the captain passes the ball to the hoop, the game is over, right? But no hands allowed it, okay? So they use three very important part of the body covered to hit a five pound and they begin with the most important one, use a lot, belt that covered the hip. Then they also use the elbow and they also use the shoulder. In some uh -huh. other places, they seem to be using probably uh, even their shoe or one of these foot because they have that one covered. Because the game was not a sport, it was not to entertain the large amounts of Mayas in those days, really. It was a religious game, a ceremonial game. So only real few people was invited. So if you get this invitation home, you show it to me, right? I can see it, just your name, right? And you're welcome, come, right? And you'll be watching the game. Because how many people you guess they might fit to watch the game? Because you need to climb to reach the top of that one, and that used to be the stairways, right? Uh -oh. it's, no stairways are done. Do you think maybe 100, 150, probably? Another 150 people climb that wall, and they watch the game from the top, too. Six high priests invited, too. Very important, watch the game from that building. One guy with a beard, watch the game from the other end, you will see. It's called Temple of the Beard Man and the elite, top elite of the best probably warrior group, clan, watch the game from the temple of the Jaguars. In front of all these people, right, that many, they play the game that represents a ritual ceremony because this game was played way, way back ago. The first people that ever played this game was the first human beings that was created by these Mayan guys. Oh. So the game story begins in a book that is a very ancient book that is called Popol Vuh. When you read Popol Bu, it's like you open in one book, right? And you got the same stories of how the gods create everything, and that stories are known today as Genesis. So Popol Bu is the Genesis, okay? And the Genesis talks about the Holy Tree of Life, a tree that is called Seva, that has 13 branches. 
So 13 is a number.